The stage was set. But what was still lacking were the scientists with the imagination to see cells for what they really were. And here in Berlin, one young and ambitious man was about to break the impasse. Theodore Schwann. The two strands of biology, animal and vegetable, were about to come together. At the time, Berlin was the European centre for anatomy, and the university the magnet for the most brilliant biologists around. Theodore Schwann was keen to make a name for himself and took a position at the prestigious Anatomical Museum. Be warned, though, it's not for the faint-hearted. A guidebook comments, boys will be admitted only in the company of their fathers or teachers, and of the female sex, only midwives will be granted admission. The visitor's attention is called mainly to the wealth of nerve preparations, a long array of monstrous births, and about 500 animal skeletons. The field of anatomy was in chaos. Nobody really knew what animals or humans were made of. Researchers believed that they were built of many different structures, granules, fibres, tubes, globules and bladders. And none of them seemed any more important than the others. Animal studies were seriously lagging behind botany, and this was because the cells are so much harder to see. So the scientists didn't really realise there were any cells there at all. And this was fueling the notion that somehow animal tissue was fundamentally different from that of plants. But Schwann used innovative ways to stain his animal tissue. And he had one of the new Lister-style microscopes. He kept finding the same type of globular structure in all the different samples. We know that Schwann was looking at cells. But at the time, researchers used different terms to describe what they were seeing. Kornchen, Kugelchen and Zellen. The penny hadn't dropped that they were looking at the same thing. And without this connection, they couldn't make the intellectual leap that cells were common to all life forms. <laughs> 